If you're making a film, which mic should you use? A lavalier mic or a boom mic? We're gonna cover all of that today. Stay tuned. All right, so check this out. I have been a filmmaker for a number of years and I have made a lot of films. I've made like three features and like 20 plus short films, okay? So here's my advice on whether or not you should use a lavalier mic or a boom mic. It depends on the situation, okay? So a boom mic is my preference. That is what I use most of the time, okay? But there are times when you need to use a lav mic. Now, if you're shooting a really wide shot, and you can lav the, the people in the scene up, then that's what you should do because you're not gonna be able to get a boom mic close enough to where it can uh, focus in on people's voices and still be far enough out of the frame. So on a wide shot, I would definitely suggest using lav mics if you have them. If you don't, then boom wherever you can. And then, you know, you can probably take the audio from the close up shots and match them to the wide shots, but you really don't wanna have to do that. So if you have both, that's what I would do. Really, that's the only time I would suggest using live mics because they take time to set up. Now, if you have somebody set that up, that's fine. But best case scenario is if you can use two mics. So if you can use a live mic and a boom mic, then you're covered. So for instance, if you know your audio is bad on a boom mic for whatever reason, you know maybe you have some wind noise or something like that, then you have these live mics and then the audio for that particular section of the dialogue it's just fine over here. So it's best to have two if you can, but if you only have to have one, I would suggest a boom mic. Like I said, setup time for lav mics uh, can take forever. So if you have a small crew, you're doing independent films, then you don't have that kind of time, okay? And then the other thing about lav mics is, you know, you gotta tape them up and hide them, but you have to tape them to a point to where they're not touching the clothes. So when somebody moves, you're not getting that friction in the audio. That's very important, okay? So, you know, I mean, come on, if somebody is moving a lot in a scene, that is gonna be very tough for a lav mic. And depending on which way that lav mic is facing, you know, it can also be susceptible to wind noise. That's just my spill. And listen, if you don't have somebody, if you don't have the extra hands to like hold a boom mic, then get a stand and set it up. And if you're doing it outside, get some sandbags, weight that stand down and set up that boom mic and you're good to go. Like that's what we did this weekend. I had one person on the camera. There were two people in the scene. We uh, borrowed a friend's uh, stand and boom mic and set that up, moved it where we needed, you know, for it to be as long as it was out of the shot and we were good to go. So I didn't have to waste time setting up a lav mic and turning the thing on and putting it in somebody's back pocket or, you know, setting up the, the receiver uh, on the camera. I, that's just too much, in my opinion. Now you might have a different opinion and your experience might be different, but from what I have done, best thing is boom mic first and lav mic on wide shots or best case scenario, if you can do both, do both, but focus on the boom mic is what I would say. All right, so that's just my advice. Until next time, I am Lad, Marlon Lad. Holla. Don't forget to subscribe and turn your notifications on, okay? If you like these videos, definitely leave me a thumbs 